Welcome back to module 13. So today we are up to pages 423 to 428. And we left last time talking about how to determine delta H, the change in enthalpy in a reaction. And two of those ways were one, by experiment, which of course takes a lot of time and a lot of resources. Or secondly, you can use bond energies, which we're gonna learn about uh, today and how to do that. So first of all, we need to remember and understand that when a chemical reaction occurs, there is chemical bond breaking and making as the reactants rearrange and break apart and then form into the products. So here's an example. Example, we have CH4, which is methane, plus 2O2 oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water. Oh, I forgot, there are two waters in this reaction. So we need to put our coefficient out front there too. All right, now to take a look at the bonds that are breaking and making, you need to remember Lewis structures. Are you happy about that? I hope that you are. If you're a little rusty on it, you may need to go back to the chapter on Lewis structures or refresh your memory by reading the notes. But let's take a look at the Lewis structures for these reactants and products. So CH4 would look like this. There would be four single bonds um, between carbon in the center and each of the four hydrogens. Then for the oxygens, because there are two O2s, we have the first molecule, two oxygens joined together by a double bond, and then you can see their lone electron pairs on each of them. But there are two of those oxygen molecules, so we have to draw another one. Those are the reactants. Then the products are CO2, so here is CO2, carbon is in the center, with double bonds to each of the oxygens, and then two HOHs, or waters. Oxygen with single bonds to the hydrogens, and then of course two also lone pairs of electrons. So there are our Lewis structures. So the bonds on the reactant side, I'm gonna write this down, bonds on reactant <coughs> side, are broken in this reaction. Bonds on the reactant side are broken, which requires energy. It takes energy to actually break those compounds apart. So that requires energy. So energy is absorbed. Okay, and then conversely, for the product side, when bonds are formed, when bonds are formed, energy is released. So on the product side, energy is being released back out into the surroundings. Okay, because remember when, um, when compounds are formed, it's because these individual atoms, they're looking to fill up their outermost um, electron orbital. And so they are wanting to fulfill that octet rule. Remember, they like to have eight electrons around. So it's kind of a relief to them when they're like, oh, we can share together, let's form a molecule. And so then they're giving off energy. They're releasing energy. All right. Also, in a chemical reaction, energy is absorbed and released. So that's kind of a repeat of what I said before. When more energy is absorbed than released, when more energy is absorbed than released, it is, I'll put a little equal sign, that equals an endothermic reaction. 
I'm just gonna abbreviate because I'm running out of room on my whiteboard here. But when more energy is absorbed than released, the reaction is endothermic. You can write in the rest of the word for me in your notebooks. Is endothermic, okay? When more energy is released than absorbed, that is when we have an exothermic reaction. When we are giving off more energy than we have taken in, then the reaction is exothermic and it's producing heat and sometimes light. So I know the question that you are all wondering is how do we know how much energy is absorbed and released in reactions? Could we possibly figure that out? You are right, we can. Actually, other scientists have done so for us, and so if they have created a table with bond energies that tell us how much energy is needed to break a bond or how much energy is given off when a bond is formed, and so we can figure out how much energy is absorbed and released. So the question is, how do we know, how do we know how much energy is absorbed or released? And that is when I can direct you to table 13.1, which is a table of bond energies. And it tells how much energy is needed to break or form a specific type of bond. So let's break that in. Tells how much energy is needed to break or form a specific type of bond. Okay, so I need to erase some of this and we're gonna try an example of how to figure this out together. I'm gonna leave my example uh, equation up here. My example reaction, erase all of my verbiage here. So how much energy is absorbed in this reaction? How much energy is released in this reaction? Which is greater? Is more energy absorbed in this reaction? or is more energy released in this reaction, which will tell us if it's endothermic or exothermic. Okay, so delta H, oh, you know what? Never mind, we're not gonna use this equation, we're using a different one, so I'm gonna erase this too, so I have a little bit more room. We could figure that one out, but we're gonna use just the example that the book uses. Okay, so remember, that delta H, the change in enthalpy, to find delta H, we take the energy that's absorbed to break the bonds minus the energy that's released to form the bonds. So energy absorbed, and I'll put underneath to break bonds. So that's what's happening on the reactant side first. And then we subtract the energy released. And this is to form the bonds of the products. Okay? So let's take a look at example 13.2. This is on page 425. It says to make ammonia. Nitrogen and hydrogen are reacted at high temperatures according to this equation. Don't you love it that they give you that little bit of extra information just to make it a little bit more interesting? This is happening at high temperatures, not average temperatures. Moving on. What is the delta H for this reaction? Is it endothermic or exothermic? Isn't it exciting that we can find this out? 
All right, so we are looking for, this is um, example 13.2, and we are looking to find delta H. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite the reaction up here, the equation for our reaction. N2 plus 3H2 yield, oh, I shouldn't have written this out for you because you had to actually figure this out, didn't you? It just said that nitrogen and hydrogen are reacted at high temperatures to form ammonia. So here's our nitrogen. You have to remember that nitrogen is one of those homonuclear diatomics, so we would never just write N. Nitrogen is always N2. Is reacted with hydrogen. Hydrogen is also homonuclear diatomic, so you would never just write H, you'd write H2. So we would have N2 plus, let me erase this right here, N2 plus H2 yields ammonia, which is NH3, and now we have to balance it. Okay, so we have two nitrogens over here, so we know that we're going to need a big two out front here to make two nitrogens, okay? So now for hydrogen on this side, we have two of this whole compound. In each compound, there's three hydrogens. So two times three is six. So we have six total hydrogens on the right, which means we need six over here. So what coefficient do I need out front? That is correct, we need a three because three times two then is six. Okay, now we have the balanced equation. And now we need to take a look at what bonds are broken and what bonds are formed. So we're gonna draw out the Lewis structures to really see this, okay? So N2 is, and I'm not gonna take the time to go over how to make Lewis structures. You're gonna have to refresh your memory on that yourself if you need to, okay? But you'd have a triple bond here and then each nitrogen also has a lone pair. Um, and then for the H2, we would have H bonded to H. Remember, hydrogen is the only atom that only wants to get two electrons in its outer valence shell. All the other atoms are really wanting eight. So hydrogen is the exception. So it's just gonna share one single bond and then they each have two electrons and they're happy. But there's not only one H2 molecule, there are three, so we need to write three out. And now ammonia, okay? Nitrogen would be in the center and it would have three H's coming off of it and a lone pair. But there's not just one ammonia molecule. Remember that coefficient out front tells us there are two. So let's make another one. N, H, H, H. Okay, now this is where the bond energies come in from table 13. So on the reactant side, these are the bonds that are being broken. So this is the energy that is being absorbed. Remember delta H equals energy absorbed minus energy released. The reactants 